It's P Samples, the revolution will be digitized. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn, the founder and content creator of the Real Talk Session Series. Thank you so much again for your love and support. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, we have the website coming out at the end of the month. That's something big. You're going to see what the vision is finally. 90% done with the formula, but it's something big. It's going to make an impact on this world. Also, shout out to the Love Mike Nia Foundation. You're going to see a little words right there and whatnot. But uh, yeah, definitely support them. The great cause turning uh, tragedy into a great positive movement. Um, but today, I told y'all that we got some team members on the way. And I'm glad to say I got the first one right here. This gentleman has definitely inspired me in different ways, especially when it came to coming into my blackness. We got this talking behind dude, but he is knowledgeable. So that's why for this segment, we're extending it more because he has not a lot of knowledge and this won't be the only time you will see him on the screen. So please welcome Mr. Isaac. All right, what's going on? It's Isaac. Um, I'm one of the founders of the Sankofa League. Uh, okay. It's internet based. Um, we make memes and stuff about waking up in your blackness. It's been around for some time. I'm also an educator. That's what I do. Um, okay. Doing my nine to five. I work in elementary schools and I teach black and brown children to love themselves. Right now, I teach um, social justice. I've been blessed with that opportunity. That's dope. I've been doing that for um, this whole year. So, you know, bring the questions on, man. Well, let's right, let's right. do it, man. Let's I talk. Let's talk real that real quick. stuff, man. All right. So, to my understanding, you have a great program that you run at the school called Boys to Men. Can you tell us about that, and then also what inspired you to start this? So, Boys to Men is a program teaching black boys. Um, Basically, the essentials of being a man mm -hmm. and what it is to be a man, I feel like that's something that's been lost in our community. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of black males out there yeah. that are taking steps to help, uh, you know, build up black boys and stuff. But ultimately, I feel like it's black men's responsibility to make sure black black boy. I mean, black men's responsibility to make sure black boys mm -hmm. are heading in the right direction. Yes. So it's 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 urgent right now especially in our community yeah and that's uh -huh. something that's very big too especially when you're looking at urban communities a lot of mm -hmm. fathers are you know lost in the system mm -hmm. or they're out on the streets and whatnot because yeah. of systematic racism or whatnot and that's important that we have educators such as yourself to really make that stance and be a positive impact for the students yeah. especially a positive black male yeah, impact that's real and i feel like i feel like that's important because even me um even me growing up i didn't have that many positive Black male role models yeah. to be honest, to be completely honest with you, and I felt like I always promised myself to when I got a little older mm -hmm. and I got to the stage that I would give back and I'll do better. I feel like it's our obligation. Like I said, it's true. It's black men's responsibility to build up yeah. black boys. And I like we've seen a lot of the patterns over the years that yeah. cause destruction, and it's now time for us to cut that pattern, cut yeah. the curse, and we out here making moves. So, yeah. touching on what you talked about from the past, a lot of you didn't have a lot of positive male black role models. Mm -hmm. When you look at education, because you are an educator, how many black teachers did you have in your life ever? I actually didn't have any black male teachers. I had black female teachers. I hadn't. I didn't have any black male teachers. That's and just my experience. What, what area I, did you grow up in? You mind? I grew up in. I was born in Newark. Um, I moved down to an area called Highstown. Okay. I grew up South in there. Jersey, right? That's in Central Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Highstown, and then I moved to um, Willingboro, New Jersey, Burlington, Willingboro area. Whatever. I was living in Willingboro, but I went to Burlington City. Long, yeah. long story short. I had a, a first sergeant. I was an ROTC. Mm -hmm. That was the only black male educator that I had, you know, in my life. And he didn't even teach main subjects. He taught ROTC. Yeah. He's from the military. So I knew that ideally growing up, school, I wasn't that big of a fan of school. I, I, I call it, what I call it, Um, I call it when you have a low academic self-esteem. So basically, mm -hmm. what does that mean? It's it means that you go to school, down, down. yeah, you go to school and you feel like school is not important or you feel like school is not meant for you yeah. and you feel like you shouldn't try. And it wasn't until I got to college that I started to realize that hey, you're actually smart. Mm -hmm. You're not just an athlete. You, you, can, you can do more than just, you know, you can actually think, you can critically think. And I feel like that wasn't, that self-esteem wasn't built into me. You know what okay. I mean? I feel like a lot of my teachers let me go wayside yeah. and stuff like that. But to bring it back to what you originally asked me, I had one teacher and I felt like, as I as I got older, I was like, yo, I, could, I can't wait till I become a teacher because mm -hmm. if I ever became a teacher, I'd be the coolest teacher ever. Yeah. And I would do things for my students that I feel like wasn't done to me. So that's part of like my motivation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, pretty much. 
Yeah, that's dope. That that representation yeah. definitely matters, and yeah. that's one big thing I'm I'm big on representation, and yeah. that's why I'm in the education field because I want to make a difference and whatnot. Yeah. Luckily, like I had a lot of positive male role models in yeah. my uh, family, also yeah. within the school. Yeah. I think I only had maybe one black male educator. He was yeah. a math teacher, gotcha. and I didn't even talk to him like that. Yeah. So you know, but these things are important. For yeah, the kids, I agree. You know? One thing I do realize though is me. I've been teaching for <laughs> almost half a decade, um, okay. and I realize that a lot of people say they want black male educators, but I, from my experience, I've seen that when when I've seen black male educators, they're not really protected or supported. The way, you would, mm-hmm. the way you would, the mm-hmm. way, way you would mm-hmm. imagine. So, like, yeah, I'm telling you, man, it's real. Like, in the struggles that you get there, the pressures put upon you, um, even like you're not seen as someone who's supposed to lead education. They see you as like a person to deal with behavior management. Yep. So, like, bring just bring all the tough kids and the bad kids to the black male. You yep. know, stack his class with all the boys that have trouble. And it's like, well, what about me as an educator? You know, I can push these kids academic, academically and intellectually yeah. to levels, but we're not worrying about the intellectual and academic level. You're worried about me just managing them, babysitting yeah. them, putting a muzzle on them. So, I've seen that from a number of, not just me, a number of my peers, yeah. same experience. You're not really supported. You know, the, the, don't make too many. You can't make too many mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're, you, you don't have the same privilege. You don't have the same. Our rope is short. Yeah, it's uh-huh. very short. Yeah, it's very short. So, and the reason why I brought that up because many times people say like, "Why is there more black males in education?" Oh, we need more black males. You're right. But one, when they do hire them, when you do get in the job, you're not supported. Mm-hmm. You're not really um. You know, they're not looking for your growth. Another thing that I realized is that hiring. Like I've been there for times where they've brought teachers in after other teachers have left or other teachers uh I've retired and yeah. you don't bring in that many black males. And I'm like, but mm-hmm. I, it's been times where I've referred black males who have education degrees. Qualified black males. Qualified. Yes. No interview. Yep. I'm just like And that that, that like really brings to the point of mm-hmm. diversity and inclusion is a buzzword when it comes to education. Mm-hmm. There's no actual thought behind it, there's no action behind it. It's yeah. just to make your institutions look good. Etc. And like going back to what you said that black males are seen as kind of the wrangler of students to say uh-huh. for a say, uh-huh. say um, the dean. Yeah, perfect example. Of what he's uh-huh. talking about. If you want a kind of storytelling type thing, yeah. you watch the show Black Lightning. I do. Black Lightning. Do. There's a principal. He was fired. A white principal was brought in, or he was forced to resign from his principal position. Uh-huh. A white principal was brought in, and that black principal was now considered the enforcer. Get these kids. There was no Get emphasis on for my the holistic my support of the yep. students and whatnot. Uh-huh. It was do what I want and nothing else. Uh-huh. So you know that's very important and valid point you brought up. Yes, yeah, no, they don't see it. They don't see it. Yeah. And, and sometimes I feel like they do see it. You know, I'm not big but on they don't care. They do, Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. That's what it is. So Yeah. And that's my opinion. That's not his opinion at all. Yeah. So don't come for Isaac at all. This is a great teacher. We need him in the field. So come at the Taryn Morgan if you got anything to say. All right. Uh so we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Okay. What was the best advice that you ever received? My father, he passed away, but my father, for the periods that he was in my life, um, he told me that when you got plans, you don't always have to tell everybody. Yeah. Work towards your goals. Tell everybody after you after you have accomplished them, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's something I do, something I've been doing, and it has taken me a long way in my life. I, you know, people bring energy. You yeah. know, like you sometimes we get stuck in telling people our our dreams and goals, and they shut them down. You know, yeah. they putting negative vibes, and negative energy on your dreams and whatever you want to do. Do it if you believe in something. Go do it. And then after to tell people after that's that's the advice my dad gave me, and I, I really I I should I need to get that, a t shirt made or get the tatted or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's really I've I've taken heed to that. Yeah. When I played football, there was a quote that we used to say all the time: "The strong stay quiet, the weak start riots." Mm-hmm. You got to move in silence because necessarily you don't want people to, to down your dreams, but also people will steal your dreams too. If you put those ideas out, exactly. You move strategically, exactly. a lot of people are taking these pictures on Instagram, but uh-huh. there's no action behind it. No, that's real. Yeah. Stealing and people are st- don't get me started on stealing dreams, yeah. ideas, inspirations. And it's not it's it's not stealing if you get if you pay homage back, like if you let people know, you credit yeah. people and stuff. But you taking me to a whole nother, you know what I mean? That's happened to me a couple of times. So yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah, we ain't gonna yeah, yeah, that. let's not let's not get yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So one thing that's a staple in the black culture is the nod. So no. what, what, are you, what are the thoughts on the nod? Because I, I heard from a podcast, I forgot what it is, what it is I believe it's the stoop, um, where they're referring to the nod is a lost art. 
when you give the nod to a kid or a younger generation, they don't really understand it or they ignore it. But older generations, they still abide by that unwritten rule. So, like, what are your thoughts on the nod? The nod. Um, to be honest, completely, I haven't noticed. I haven't noticed um, that the younger generation. I never really thought about it. But when I think about it, there's a lot of things. I feel like the nod is important. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's um. You're it's acknowledging like that you, my brother, yeah. we feel, we sh- we share the same struggle and the same thing, especially living in America, right? The yeah. same injustices, the same struggles. Um, as far as the young, it make that makes sense though that it is lost, but yeah. I, I I ain't gonna say that I've you know I've documented it or noticed it, but I will say that as just even in the black male in general, I, I do feel like our interactions and us acknowledging others is very important. Yes, and I feel like sometimes we are made to be as enemies you know what i mean like it's it's, it's culturally it's acceptable socially acceptable for us to be enemies yeah for us to compete and you see it all over social media right um you see it on it's always like like you know i think about the situation when like black male pain is is entertainment yeah you know what i mean like you look at all these entertainers that's getting caught in these in these situations in these allegations i don't know what's true or not but i just like i, I realize that when it's white people that face the same thing it's not they don't face the same scrutiny Mm-hmm. Not from their community and not from you know and not from our community as well. Yeah. To lead it back to what I'm saying is like as far as us not each other, it's very important. Like sometimes I walk into I, I walk into a store, I walk into um a fast food restaurant, right? Mm. And I've noticed that when it's a black male, sometimes at times it's like, yo, you can say how you doing. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to such and such. Customer service. Have a have a good day. <laughs> yeah. Why is it like you stare at me like what I want? Yeah. Like what you want type thing. I'm like, because it's like to me, because it, to, to, it's another black male. It's like that alert comes. It's like, oh, it's another black male. So, yeah. you know, I don't got to be, well, he going to think I'm soft. Yeah. Or he going to, he gonna, I'm competing with him. Or I don't mess with him. Or I got beef with him. Or this and that. And I'm just like, it's crazy because we need each other. Yep. Like if anybody needs anybody, it's black males. We need each other. Black women. We need black women. Black women need black men. Black males need black males. We have yep. to stick together. But it's been so much divisiveness. I mean, like you talked about, you touched on it earlier about systematic racism, how we've been disenfranchised, years of slavery, all of, all of that plays an effect. But right now, if I come to you and I acknowledge you, if you see me, you know, like we need to, we need yeah. to have a little pact. We need if, to do something because we face same struggle. And I say that uh, this is why I always get offended if, um, when I used to work at any type of place, even being a teacher, a new black male educator gets hired, or whether you're not doing that, mm-hmm. bruh, mm-hmm. I always go on my way to speak to you. Yeah. Cause I know the stuff that you're about to go through, and I know the stuff that I've been going through. That's important. Yep. Nobody's gonna have a better understanding than another black male. Yep. And it's like at times it's like I'll go out my effort to speak to some dudes. They don't think it's important. You know what I mean? You go out your way, and then the communication dies right there. But to to like I said, I know I'm I'm going. Wait, I could talk about this conversation in so many different directions and you go got deep more into time it. But, to talk about the stuff now, later like, on. Yeah, right now, yeah, man. bro. But like, yeah. yo. Acknowledging your brother, acknowledging another black male, whether you see him on the street. Yeah. What either way, say what's up. Do something. The head nod is important. Like we here. Yeah. We here. You yep, know? Exactly. So all right. So um this is a question I like to ask people. Um it's a repeat question. You're gonna hear some repeat questions every now and then, but it's how I yell it. Hey, it's free. Away. It's free. Away. Um who is your role model? Because I think that's some very important on how you got to this point today. Role models are big. So who is your role model? I if you don't, have multiples. I have multiple role models. Okay. Um, Muhammad Ali. Impossible is nothing. Cool. Like yeah. Um, Muhammad Ali is a role model. Malcolm X is definitely a role model. Okay. Um, I know Malcolm X is a bit cliche, but I feel like people don't know the real story about Malcolm X and the things that he talked about and the struggle. That he, Malcolm X, the reason why he's one of my role models is because he came from rags to riches. Like, mm-hmm. this is a guy who was completely ignorant. In his mind, you know, he was a pimp. Yeah. He went to jail. Um, he's permanent here. And then he he got self knowledge, yeah. and now he and then like this is what I was talking about earlier about um, intellectual self esteem or academic self esteem. Mm-hmm. Once he knew who he was, he started to preach that real. No, who, it's not a lot of people that can debate with Malcolm X. Yeah. Like, if you ever watch his debate, dog, he was a lawyer. Like I'm telling you, he can get you out of anything. Sure. Yes, he was efficient with his arguments, and that's what he and read. I feel like, too. Yes, he read Reading a lot. Is important. Yes, he read a lot. So that is somebody that's definitely an inspiration for me. Um. Muhammad Ali. The reason why Muhammad Ali, people don't really realize, Muhammad Ali was alone. They were actually friends. Yeah. But the thing about Muhammad Ali, he was on top of the world. Mm-hmm. He had the belt. He had all the money. He was famous. Um. The reason why he's one of my role models because even regardless of all his fame, he still spoke out for black people. Yeah. 
and he was one of the very few athletes to do so, and he wasn't he wasn't scared. This guy, this guy didn't. He said they tried to get this guy to go fight a war, and he said, "No, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice all this stuff. All, I'm willing to sacrifice my belt. I'm willing to sacrifice the money, the fame, because I'm not going to v Vietnam." I'm not going to war. You know, the Viet Cong never did nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't even treat me in this country like I'm human. And at that time, I mean, even still now, black Americans are facing injustices. Black Americans are not being treated as humans. Yeah. And, you know, whether you realize it or not, it's the truth. We, we're looked at as second class citizens. And, um, and we, they use the ignorant, the ignorant amount, the, they use the ignorant of our people to, you know, to, to, to paint us as certain pictures. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, those two are definitely my inspiration. I don't have many role models, but if I could say that, those are definitely my two role models. Yeah. Okay, that's dope, definitely. Yeah. And shout out to the, all the arms people, though. We don't got no issues with y'all at all. Yeah. <laughs> my grandfather was actually a uh, Mount yeah. Fort Marine, and um, I think it's called Mount Fort yeah. Point Marine. Yeah, the first Black Marines that were allowed to uh, fight in uh, Vietnam. He was actually awarded by Obama yeah. um, a couple of years ago. So yeah. shout out to y'all. So yeah. no issue with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, nah. like, you got to be aware of who writes the history, definitely. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, um, Malcolm X, and even yeah. Martin Luther King. Like, yeah. they tried to throw or misconstrue the history. Yeah. Martin Luther King had mad guns. Yeah. They don't know about that. Yeah. Martin Luther King was assassinated <laughs> by the government. We ain't gonna yeah. go into that right now, yeah. you know, but... Uh, yeah, let's not, let's not go into that right <laughs> yeah. now. But it's certain things that are misconstrued, and once you do the knowledge and the, the yeah. research on your own, you see, you really start to see what stuff is for, you know, looking past that face value, you know? I agree, I agree with you on that. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. especially, like, when you look at the Black Panthers, I'm going to talk about it later. I ain't put you in that, but... Yeah, yeah. No, don't get me started on Black Panther. Yeah. Cointel Pro. I'm trying Cointel to tell you, Pro, man, look that up. I'll be talking about this for for, for days. I mean, yeah. This interview won't even won't capture that. <laughs> Wrapping up, uh, I want to touch on something that was very close to me, 2018, dealt with yeah. depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. and I learned a lot and that there weren't any resources for black people in general, black men. You working with students is very big. Uh, New York actually made mental health awareness part of their curriculum mm -hmm. requirement. Um, so, like, what are your thoughts with teaching children? Like, do you talk to them like that? What's your approach with that usually? My thoughts with uh, mental health in general is a real thing. I love the attention that's getting. It's been a phenomenon that's been going on for a long time, but I feel like research is just now starting to put a microscope on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm related back to black community because I'm always worried about my people. Yeah. I feel like in the black community, mental health, because of a lack of knowledge and we're not, we're misinformed a lot about it. You weren't allowed to talk about mental health issues. Like mm -hmm. um, if you were, if you are, like I said, it's just get over it. It's always been just get over it. It's yeah. not that serious. You being weak, whatever it is. But I've had a lot of personal friends and personal experiences with people who's had those issues. Uh, I love that. It's like I said, I love that it, the attention that's being brought to it. Black people have the most reason to have yes. mental health issues, and people don't realize that. I'm, I'm 500 years of being bred by slavery. I know people, some people want to mm -hmm. even start talking about this. Slavery's back in the day. It's genetic. Generations upon generations upon generations have been through this horror story, yep. right? And you expect there to not be no aftermath after that? Yeah. Like I'm talking about 500 years, and it's just like 50, 60 years ago, you know, we used to, the civil rights movement, we still. Yeah. Those are our still, parents too. That's what I'm saying. Those are our parents. Our parents. And that's what I'm like, yeah, the babies so it. when you talk about the stresses that you have just being a black male or a black female, it's stressful being in the world, deal, not just dealing with racism, dealing mm -hmm. with financial finance, de dealing with your class, yeah. dealing with your sexuality, whatever it is that you are, whatever, if you're black, whatever's bad in this world, in this society, if you're black, mm -hmm. it's worse. Yep. Like whatever struggle somebody face, if you black, if you homeless and you and you white, yep. and you homeless and you black, it's worse if you black. I can tell, yep. you, tell you that. Whatever you do, whatever profession it is, it's always and it, you know people say you got to work ten times harder than you black. Unfortunately, it's the truth. It's the truth. True. So yep. when I talk about mental health and in, in black community, it's 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 almost like like I said, it almost doesn't make any sense why our community wouldn't be for mental health and support more because yeah. we have the biggest reason to. You know what I mean? We have the, our voices aren't heard. We don't have the media. We don't have the resources. We don't have the generational wealth. So there's things that happen to us in our community, these issues that we face, whether it's police, police brutality, whether it's lack of, you know, lack of educational resources, lack of, you know, whatever, whatever it is your issue is, yeah. is real. And I feel like it's definitely real when you black. 
Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we face a lot of stressors mm-hmm. financially, systematic racism, going back to that. Spiritually, um, emotionally, discrimination, mm-hmm. prejudice, mm-hmm. food deserts. Mm-hmm. We're going to really take it there. Like, there's the reason why black people have high blood pressure, and that's tied to stress. Stress. So you got to yeah. realize what's going on. Uh-huh. P- finding positive Di- diet ways well. to get that out. Yes, diet, diet yes. as well. Drink, That's, drink water. Yeah. Stop drinking that juice, man. <laughs> Lack of Even vegetation. if it's say fruit uh-huh. juice, look at the all that, stats. All that soul Cut food ain't water. good, man. That's all you got to do. Yeah, all that soul food ain't good. Man. Exactly. <laughs> you know, right now, um, I think it's very important that communication is had between men and women, and non-binary people also. Yeah. Um, so if you can say one thing, particularly to women. And then also one thing to society, what would it be? To women in general, um, especially black. Well, I, well, if I could say one thing to black women, I'll say black women. I love black women. Uh, can, I love and protect who? black women. Um, I feel like uh, there's a there's a there's a bridge or there's there's this this beef between uh, black men and black women. Mm. We need to have conversations and we need to understand each other. And I feel like that's a lot of part they play. They use that. I feel like the system uses that to put us against each other. And. Um, lack of knowledge and lack of love and and the hurt and the pain a lot of times is channeled yeah. through that so um what i would say to black women is i love you. i love you black woman i support you um i understand i will try to understand you i ask that you do the same thing i will i will, I will also say to women is don't let don't let ignorant guys speak for who black men are yep don't let the media tell you that we don't love you we don't support you don't let these athletes who get married and don't come back and don't marry black women tell you that we don't love you um because it's not true um yeah. this is eight, why the real talk session series exists so we yeah. can tell y'all directly because yeah. they're not going to tell y'all yeah. that we 80 85 percent of black men I mean, marry black women and love yeah. black women all my friends most of my friends 90 percent of my friends are in a relationship <laughs> with black women yeah. so like i said that whole little taboo that they try to pull off it's um it's false but um and uh, what i would say to society is that um Black men can be victims too. Yep. And I say that because, like I said, it's it's after you tu- after you get the after you turn past the age of seven. And some people might not know what I'm talking about. I know I need to go into more detail, but with these time constraints, I'm talking. I'm do my best to keep it short as possible. But I feel like as a black boy, after you after the age of seven, six or seven, just start. You know, you see kids getting shot, right? Is it, you see certain things. I feel like. Society doesn't see black men as victims in any situation. Whether you're dealing with a white man, a white woman, a black woman, whatever situation is, you are always the the one in wrong, yeah. you know. And I'm like, like we talk about mental health and we talk about a struggle. Um, we have issues too, as well as black women have their own independent issues. It's not about comparing, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying, understand, have some type of empathy, and understand that black men can be victims too. That's what I will say to society. Okay. And, yep. I right, appreciate you, brother. Right, We're definitely going to have you on here more often. Yeah. Like I said, this is the new team member. Team, oh, my fault. Team member. Team member, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You good. It's cool. I mean, new team member right here. So you're going to see much more of Isaac. But uh, can you let everybody know how to reach you, your organizations? So yeah. Uh, you can reach me. Um, I You can reach me by email. It's um, Ibankwa, A-B-A-N-K-W-A, at Kip nj.org you can reach me on my instagram my name is solar energy on instagram s-o-l-a-r underscore i-n-n-e-g-r yeah um solar energy and i'm also co-founder of st kofa league um st kofa league i'm not gonna spell it out for you look it up you know it's hashtag st kofa league it'll be on there all right yeah. but other than that like i said it's just fun let's do this again i'm yes, always sir. willing to talk all right everybody keep in mind that website coming out please check it out realtalksessionseries.org also, donations will be uh, available later on at a point in time, but sign up for our email list so you can get more, more information. Also, other current information that we may put out there. We have some ideas for community service events, stuff for the kids, some fitness stuff, all that stuff. So please, please, please subscribe to our email list. And thank you all for watching Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. The revolution will be digitized.